This tutorial should work for Blender 2.9 and up. You will need the Blender Source Tools add-on and be moderately familiar with using Blender. We will be using the TF2 Medic in this tutorial. Before starting, skim over the model's bone layout if you aren't already familiar with it. Make sure you know which bone is the root bone. This will be very important later. It's the bone at the top of the bone hierarchy. The one you move to move the whole model. Let's start building the physics mesh, or collision model, whichever sounds good to you. First make a new collection. Name it something you can remember. With that collection selected, click add, mesh, cube, in object mode. You can click the skeleton, and enable the bone name labels in this tab over here. Move the cube to where the root bone is, and scale it to roughly fit in the model's body. Important, you will need to apply smooth shading to each part of the physics mesh, or the compiler won't compile it properly. You will also need to apply a material to each part of the physics mesh. A blank material will do. Continue building the physics mesh by either adding in or duplicating more cubes and moving them into position next to the bones. Try to position the physics parts in front of the bones, so that they move with the corresponding part of the model. How many physics parts you add mainly depends on how flexible you want the physics to be, but you generally want physics for the main joints, like the arms, legs, spine, head. Side note, certain Gary's mod tools can be used to move the boats that don't have physics attached to them. However, these boats cannot affect bones in Gary's mod that do have physics, regardless of the bone hierarchy. More or less important to remember when making physics for models. Click on add, empty, plane axis, and make sure the axis is at the world origin. This will help with symmetrical physics joints. Set up the physics parts for one side of the model. Either side is fine. Normally you'd want to leave some space between the physics parts, so the joints don't lock up or start spazzing out from self-collision. There are QC file commands that let you control which joints can collide with each other, allowing less restricted physics placement. They are a pain to set up from scratch, so only use them if you have the time and patience. Or a template, which will be available in the description. Once you're done, click one of the side pieces and click over here to add a modifier to it. Choose the mirror modifier. Next click in the space next to mirror object, and select the empty axis that was set earlier. The axis of the world origin will allow you to mirror objects along the center axis instead of the object's origin point. Now you can repeat this for the other symmetrical joints, but for even more convenience, select the other pieces, then the one with the modifier. Over here, click copy to select it. This will give you some time saving convenience for symmetrical joints. When you're all set, apply the mirror modifiers. Unfortunately there weren't any shortcuts for this part. Next select all of the physics parts, then select the skeleton. Then click object, parent, with empty groups. Click over here on the Object Data Properties tab so you can see the list of vertex groups. Now select a physics part and switch to Edit Mode. Select all of its vertices, then find the vertex group for the bone it should be associated with. Click it, then click Assign to assign those vertices to that bone. Make sure weight is set to 1. Click these dots up here to switch between objects while in edit mode. 
can't repeat for the rest of the physics. The search box can help if there are a lot of bones. For the mirrored parts, select each side individually and assign to the appropriate vertex group. When you've gotten that done, click the skeleton, and switch to pose mode to check your work. It isn't necessary, but it gives you the chance to spot any problems before the final steps. Finally, we click on the scene properties to set up the source engine export. After choosing the export location, click SMD for the export format, and choose the folder containing Gary's Mod Studio MDL for the engine path. The target engine is source for Gary's Mod. Important. Click on the items in the Source Engine Exportables tab to reveal the Amateur Properties tab. If the mesh is something other than an imported DMX or SMD, Blender Source Tools may try to add an extra bone to one or more of the exportables. Make sure you uncheck Implicit Motionless Bone for all of the exports, since the added bone can mess up certain things when compiling. After everything is all set, export the physics mesh along with anything else you intend to export. If you want better fitting physics, here's a simple method. In edit mode with a cube selected, select all the faces, then click edge, subdivide. Next, click vertex, smooth vertices, laplation. Expand the options down here, and max out the number of iterations to 200. This way you can fit physics in the model more closely. Note, more vertices slash faces means more collisions that Gary's mod has to process in game. A subdivision on each physics piece won't add much, but excessively high vertex counts can cause lag on lower end computers. While fitting in physics, it's important to remember that only convex pieces are supported. We'll explain for those who don't already know this. This shape here is currently a convex shape. But if we move some vertices inward like this, it becomes a concave shape. If you try to compile a model with a physics part in this shape, the compiler will apply convex hull to it, making it come out like this in the compiled model. To make physics with open shapes, you will have to use multiple convex pieces to build the shape and assign them to the same joint. Mostly useful for props, but can also be used in ragdolls with the right QC input. If a physics part is too small, it may not compile correctly. If one is thinner than 0.5 meters, it will cause a two-dimensional geometry error when compiling. Note, the two-dimensional geometry rule doesn't apply to the pointed end of cone-like shapes if it's a single vertex. At the time of making this tutorial. Last tip, Gary's mod can handle up to 32 physics joints on a single ragdoll. Any more than that will cause a bug that prevents the model from spawning properly. It's now time for the QC file. The rest of this tutorial is for people who know how to compile source models. If you don't, you may need a separate tutorial for that. The part for collision model stuff is usually done after the animation sequences. You'll first need to have collision joints for ragdolls or collision model for props with only one physics part. Having only one physics piece with collision joints will make the physics buggy. Put the name of the physics mesh that you exported here. Mass sets the physics weight in kilograms. Inertia sets how easily the model goes from being stationary to moving. Higher numbers make the model harder to push around and take longer to fall. Damping and rod damping affect how smoothly the joints move, but we don't have many details on what exactly these settings do. Rubo is where you specify which physics joint is the center point for controlling the physics. 
However, the compiler will automatically set the bone at the top of the bone hierarchy as the center point, regardless of which bone is typed here, or if physics were assigned to it. It's irrelevant to fist gun use, but very significant to posing tools. The joint constraint section can be set up in the Half-Life model viewer after you compile the model. We'll go over there now. You can click the checkbox for physics model in the render tab to make it visible. These were the regular physics for Medic, just to show a different style of setting up physics. Click on the physics tab to start setting the joint constraints. The model's position may change depending on how it and its physics were exported. Click the drop-down box to choose from the joints assigned to the physics mesh. Here you can set the range of rotation for each axis that each joint can move as a ragdoll. The root bone should be left blank. You can test the rotation ranges here, and adjust the minimum and maximum angles for each axis. The mass bias option is something few people know much about. It changes the mass for specific joints in relation to the physics designated mass. The mass is multiplied by the mass bias number, and the total is used as the mass for the joint. Useful for making certain joints lighter or denser than the rest of the model. When you've set all of the desired joint constraints, click the Generate QC button. The QC string for the joint constraints will be copied to the clipboard. The joint constraint data should be pasted down here. You'll get some text looking like this. Be sure to remove the extra text that gets pasted along with it. It's usually stuff you already have in the QC file. If you had concave physics, type concave per joint for ragdolls, or concave for props here. If you're setting custom joint collisions, they'll go right after the joint constraints. They should look something like this. This will make it so only the two bones on this line will collide with each other. However, the rest of the physics will clip through themselves unless we specify the collisions for the other joints. Pasting and typing out each desired joint collision pair for your ragdoll can be time consuming. Lucky for you, we have a template for a standard valve biped in the description. You can download that, copy, paste and modify it in your QC file. If you want to, anyway. It's only a suggestion. Once you're done updating the QC, compile the model again and you should be done. All that's left is to try the model out in Gary's mod. Other note, it's possible to have physics joints that aren't parented to the root bone, but Gary's mod doesn't like this. It can cause errors unless you know how exactly to take advantage of it. If you have questions, other tips, or lesser known techniques, leave them in the comments. Source modding forums are known for being frequently unhelpful. 